Thank you, sir. Okay, so we'll be starting now. Okay. A pleasant evening, everyone. Greetings from CESA VJTI. I hope all of you, the viewers, our today's guest, and the CESA team are doing well and safe. I am Kunal Vadwa from Second Year BTEC Civil Department, and it is my pleasure and an honor to host this meet today. This is the second guest lecture conducted under the GLS series of Stapatya 2022, organized by CESA VJTI. VJTI Mumbai was established in 1887 and has pioneered India's engineering education, research and training ecosystem. Located in South Mumbai, VJTI is an autonomous institution and is known for its high quality teaching, industry connections and a strong alumni network. CESA which stands for Civil Engineering Students Association, is the Departmental Students Committee of the Civil Branch. Every year, it hosts Tapatya, an annual technical festival wherein students from all around India get to attend workshops, take part in competitions, and get a chance to have interactive session with professionals from different sectors. We at CESA invite guest speakers who are well-known in their fields and industry veterans to interact with students and lecture them to bridge the gap between theoretical and practical knowledge. In the past, we had the opportunity to have Mr. Jayant Patil, sir, Ministry of Water Resources. And just yesterday, we were honored by the guest lecture of Mr. Subrata Datta, the project director of Narendra Modi Stadium. I hope everyone enjoyed that and are looking forward to today's lecture. Before introducing our today's guest, <laughs> let me ask you this. Have any of you ever thought of creating or managing a mega structure? Ever wondered about the challenges one faces while handling such a project? Today, we have with us a guest who also started, like most of us, as a civil engineer and has made his dream come true with his experience, expertise, and hard work. This guest is currently an advisor to the LNT firm has around four decades of vast experience in the field of construction and management. He has headed various infrastructure projects, such as the Salala Airport to the Royal Palace in Oman, and much more. But his greatest achievement and most generous contribution to our country was being the project director of the Statue of Unity. I am pretty sure there is no need to introduce the Statue of Unity. Hailed as the eighth wonder of the world, it is currently the tallest statue on earth. With almost twice the height of Statue of Liberty, this colossal sculpture proudly stands above the Narmada River at Kevadia, Gujarat. You won't believe me, but this stupendous project of a height of 597 feet and a workforce of around 4,000 laborers was successfully completed in just 33 months without any accidents. This structure isn't just a simple statue. It consists of a viewing gallery, a memorial garden, and even a grand museum. It is an indeed a tribute to the Indian engineering skills and workforce. This mammoth of a project wouldn't have been possible without a today's guest leadership and guidance. He is an astute and dedicated manager and manages to keep all the stakeholders on track. He leads by example and shows us how to face challenges like a true leader. Please welcome Mr. Mukesh Rawal. Sir, it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I thank CESA VJTI for this opportunity. And uh, I hope the yesterday you also you must have had this very interesting session with my colleague, Mr. Datta. 
who built another yes, biggest in the world like uh, after wembley this was the biggest one so the, uh, we had two projects at going on concurrently uh, during the same period in gujarat hardly 300 kilometers from each other one was statue and the other one uh, the stadium we earlier it was called motera stadium so subsequently the name is changed so uh, friends uh, as you introduce you uh, introduce me i am also like one of you uh, 40 years back i was just a simple uh, student who came out from the college and embarked in this field of civil engineering so uh, i would touch upon a few aspects uh, of a uh, Uh, how you build your career because uh, when when we came out the only opportunity available was in government jobs and uh, that time this sardar sarovar dam project was going on which needed almost 20000 civil engineers so initially i joined them they they had uh, issued uh, like uh, ad hoc uh, appointment later even before our results were out we were all uh, appointed as assistant engineers by the government of gujarat and i was also one of them and i was posted in a main canal project in uh, way back in june 1982 uh, that uh, site where i started my career was just uh, i would say some 40 kilometers away from where i concluded my career so uh, it, it was a round journey for me like you no know, you come back to the same place but this time the client was same uh, and we we switched the positions i, I was the contractor and uh, my earlier employer uh, employer was my client so sardar sarovar nigam was the uh, client for this project they are the employers it's a, a small side line and another important thing which i would like to stay uh, state here is that this project was something unique to me because uh, i have uh, spent most of my career time in uh, overseas gulf almost 10 years in iraq i was there for 4 years and that is way back in 80s i was in iraq baghdad we built uh, police headquarters which was actually a ministry of interiors the nerve center of saddam hussein so it was a quite an interesting project and uh, uh, almost uh, 14 projects i have moved around and all of a different variety so uh, when you start your career what what i i always advise the young engineers because uh, what usually happens these days that people look only at the uh, what package you are getting you know all our selection is mostly based on how much this company is paying or how much that organization will pay me but uh, i would advise you to do one thing that when you are uh, just building up your career the initial stages of your life it is very important to choose the organization or the place where you work very carefully and always look what you can learn from there so the first phase you should focus only on learning because once you get into the race for the package and all no sometimes what happens that there are organizations which will offer you very great positions like you cannot imagine no they will make you some uh, project head or something and all but the job which you would be doing won't be teaching you anything or it would be teaching you something which is not worth the while so when we joined larsen and tubro was an old timer and it was called engineering construction corporation ecc was the thing and uh, i was already working with the government and life was very uh, like uh, you know what government jobs are like so uh, this three months uh, they started pampering me we were uh, working at site but site was uh, not yet started we were just doing initial main canal alignment survey and all and some of the things which uh, i came across you no know, which was like a young enthusiastic engineer coming out of the college and what he what he wants to do and what he finds at the site you no know, it's quite 
contrast and my expectations were quite different i wanted to do something whereas in government it was usual no you were class 2 gazetted officer i could even that that period sign on this true copies and all those things and lot of luxury in people will uh, uh, salute you know bada saab aa gaya that sort of thing in a village but uh, i found that it, it was not leading me anywhere so within 3 months i got fed up and most of the job was pleasing the bosses you know like the boss is going to our dam site so you have to be on the highway offer him some tea and this things so were from baroda someone chief engineer is traveling so being an assistant engineer you have to be at highway uh, those days uh, world bank you Uh, people used to come and also i i i thought oh, did i do real engineering for this and some of the practices which were going on no like it was against my grain like we anyone who who, who is working hard and studying and who, who is aspiring for a career definitely from uh, coming from a middle class background no with a straight forward upbringing certain things which were not in the in the blood so i i i just really absconded from that place and uh, in the meanwhile larson and tubra had already uh, interviewed us in the campus itself and they took some time and uh, that offer letter came uh, so i joined lnta uh, after almost 6 months late they kept uh, that offer open that time maybe they were not finding engineers so i joined at directly at the site in uh, gujarat cripco the fertilizer plant was going on and the journey started like that so when i reached there the uh, first thing which still i remember that uh, that's what i'm saying what is culture and what we were supposed to learn ethics and all so when i went uh, uh, we we had a big raft foundation going on it was a urea prill tower of 87 7 meters height with a slip forming technique it was going on 26 meter dia and uh, the depth of the foundation was around 3.5 meters those days we didn't have transit mixers and uh, those batching plants and all and we had some 18 gangs of uh, this uh, manual concrete you know with mixer machine with the farma you load the uh, mixer and do that concrete that sort of gang and all male female uh, labor and everything would be there and it would the site would be like a uh, like a fun fair or a marriage fest you know they would put up my loud speakers and some songs would be going on because that continuous raft concrete was there and we had those gangs working and my job was to see that uh, the cement uh, is uh, being fed into the mixer as it it was supposed to be like we had given a chart that m that time m20 concrete was going on so that how many bag and how much firma aggregates and all those uh, things were given to us and we had to tick mark so only job as an engineer i was given as a trainee was to count the cement bags and at the end of the day those munshis of that uh, uh, the contractor no they would be so fussy because they would be hating you because you count each and every bag and even to see that the bag is totally empty so he will knowingly uh, that uh, वो झटकेगा तुम्हारा सामने बैग ऐसे बी कवर्ड विद सीमेंट सो एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वी वर सम सिक्स इंजीनियर्स नो नो बडी कैन रिकॉग्नाइज ईच अदर वी वर ऑल कवर्ड विद अ केक ऑफ सीमेंट दिस वाज द फर्स्ट जॉब इट इट लीड टू लॉट ऑफ फ्रस्ट्रेशन बट आई रिमेंबर द वर्ड्स ऑफ माय रेसिडेंट इंजीनियर ही वाज मिस्टर ए के सहस्रबुदे So he came. I just complained, sir. Engineering ka iske liye kya? With the we were frustrated. So he said, "Beta, ye ye hi kam pehle sikhna hai." So we 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 were taught in those old school ways, like, and he said that from government me, five bori kaise pachane ka wo sikhaya hoga. Idhar agar aadha bori pach gaya na, to tera naukri chala jayega. So this dialogue I still remember. that this was the diligence towards quality which we were fed into 
and subsequently uh, there were so many training programs and on the job training so this is how we built up our career then you move on i went to alibag and many other projects and each with a different thing so we were taught that keep your eyes and ears open that's what i am telling all my engineers go well, in those initial days if you keep your ears and eyes open and learn you will not repent you will know each and everything how things are done and when you are then sitting in a uh, very cushy job or at the desk also if somebody is bluffing to you that this thing could not be done because of that you can tell him in a typical manner why of course sab malum hai you you cannot just fool around with me so that is what builds a very strong foundation and uh, those time those boundaries were not the civil mechanical electrical so i have subsequently worked as a head of a process plant uh, construction also or in electrical projects substation projects and all those things so we 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 were quite versatile so i thought i i should spend some time in just telling you that how important it is and this is how one can build the career and then i was known to Uh, go f- for any versatility like if you if we had any project which needed something which is not run of the mill sort of thing no you constructing a, a building or a residential quarters is a quite common thing no everybody is every day job but when it comes some peculiar things they will remember rawal so this is how i was selected in this and subsequently when in oman i did i i, I was actually at panipat doing that uh, pet pet uh, uh, project there uh, with dupont technology a process plant was going on and from there i was picked up as project manager of oman uh, sultan's personal palace so imagine from chemical plant to going to a project with an intricate work in a lot of aesthetics and all it was a con- uh, confidential project so we didn't have any photograph lnts no brochure would even talk about those uh, things but it was probably the best project i did in terms of uh, artistic things and uh, being a confidential project no even your own company or your own organization did, don't sometimes really appreciate because the visitors the vip visitors who come to uh, oman for visit no they wouldn't be able to even enter that project that's how strict it was so wo to kya jungle mein jaise wo mor ka dance hota hai na aisa jungle mein mor na acha kisne dekha aisa ho gaya so i at the fag end of my career i got so frustrated i told sir i have done so many thing but i never got recognition and uh, it was just a evening party going on that time i told uh, our uh, md so mr subramaniam said that bachu tere ko ek aisa job mein dalunga na ki puri duniya dekhegi aur tera acid test hone wala hai to karega challenging is i said, and i i i like challenges because said similar incidents had happened at reliance jamnagar refinery which was the largest refinery in asia we had a strength of almost 65000 labor there and uh, the bactels were the consultants who told them that it will take 8 years and larsen and tubro told them uh, to the ambanis that we can do it in 5 years so that was a challenge and that time i was picked up from a cement plant construction to this project and i i was asked to do materials management imagine a civil engineer who was in charge of a 650 houses colony suddenly uh, removed from there put into a project where he was to just do material management material management means the site entire reliance refinery site was uh, almost of the size of mumbai uh, if you see in the google earth you will find out the area it has some 21 different plants pvc vcm hdp so and so and each and every plant the there would be a different project like it we treated it as a separate uh, project and each project was to be fed with the centralized material department and that 
that was a new concept that time centralized material feeding so now there are many different names for this you no know, supply chain management i don't even understand so many words and all but we have been there and done that so i i was put in charge of that because of my versatility what i told you so when you are at the job you learn all the aspects of project project management and all so you you can fit into anything and that's what makes you so indispensable and so useful that uh, you 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 can achieve anything what you want so never get overwhelmed by technology and all those things and uh, uh, simple common sense i was not a great student because even i, I had got a i uh, i i this post graduation uh, admission i said i would continue with my uh, job itself so the, the, that was my idea of working and i i learned so many things at site so this is how the journey started and from oman i came to this project as a challenge so it was like a, at that time i was country head for uh, uh, lnt oman uh, and i was uh, taking care of buildings and ur urban infrastructures there from there i came to this project as a site in charge or a project director but the end to end responsibility was given to me now we will touch upon the uniqueness of this project these are the key stakeholders about this uh, svprt was the owner sardar vallabhbhai patel rashtriya ekta trust and the sardar sarovar narmada nigam they were the employers so they floated the tenders and we were the lowest bidder and uh, turner project management india michael graves and menhard they they were the consortium of the project managers so turner was the leader there so they led the pmc team let's not talk much about those consultants it's a quite different story sometimes i tell the tell that you know the franchise type of consultants are not so great in india because the names are there but you the performance is quite different वो जैसे मैकडोनल्ड को धाबा बना दिया ऐसा मतलब दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ टेस्ट यू विल गेट सो वी वी हैड इवन अदर अदर कंसल्टेंट्स आल्सो लाइक आवर इन हाउस कंसल्टेंट्स वी हैड हायर्ड एंड देयर वर सम स्टिपुलेशंस इन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट यू हैड टू हायर सम स्पेसिफाइड स्पेशलिस्ट सो वी हैड सम और इन अरूप लंदन वाज आवर लीड इंजीनियर फॉर सिविल एंड स्ट्रक्चरल एमईपी डिजाइन likewise for uh, this uh, hydrological study we had wellington ford and all those thing so those 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 were different agencies we hired But the real uh, crux of this project is that uh, it was a altogether a different project because somebody had a dream who had visual uh, seen that he wanted to build a big statues of world uh, world's largest statue the, our prime minister that time he was the chief minister of gujarat so he had this dream some guy mr ram sutar finally visualized it how it should be or what it could be and my job was to take care that the thing is getting converted into reality so imagine the difficulty in understanding the so somebody's dream somebody's visualization you have to convert into reality and for that you need thorough understanding of their personalities like you have to walk into their shoes what they are thinking and this artist you no know, like 92 year old i have great respect for this gentleman and uh, we built a very good relationship in this during this project we came very close personally also uh, and understood each other so that's another aspect of project management that how you deal with your stakeholders so in this case the stakeholders were quite different and unlike in gulf we had a totally different uh, scenario no totally professional uh, the uh, dealings and all those thing here you had a lot of uh, human interactions right from this uh, our prime minister this artist 
this and there were other stakeholders at the ground level at the various agency levels our pmc consultants contractors then local population because this area was already already having so many issues political and all those things it's a tribal area omeda patkar those issues were there it, it uh, land acquisition was a big challenge and in those hostile environment like people say that it was a politically very favorable but no the situation when we went there were quite different the in this area uh, the bharatiya janata party had no hold this was a tribal area and congress and other parties local tribal parties were ruling there in the local government and also it was quite a different ball game actually the environmental uh, the scenario was quite hostile when we started doing work so statue as you all this thing you already must be aware i am repeating again that uh, it, it why is the largest because if you compare with the statue of liberty it's a 93 meter tall and it took 12 years to build actually this uh, statue statue of liberty is only 46 meter only of the battle part whereas our statue is 157 meters so that way we are three and a half times bigger actually only if you take into account the metal to metal comparison from foot to toe correct so the, 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 this was the biggest difference and when when i went for a, uh, this uh, one award ceremony in new york no the, that time it was very interesting and when i narrated this they got uh, really uh, Uh, we should appreciate these uh, people that they gave me standing ovation for almost five minutes, and I said, "How many lives were lost? You forget about it was an old historical thing, and things were quite difficult. But in statue, we did it almost uh, in thirty-three months. The actual construction was done in thirty-three months, so the speed was almost sixteen times, and without any loss of life. And this statement really made them appreciate it. Uh, similarly, these other statues in Ushiku Daibatsu or Spring Temple Buddha Japan are in nowhere uh, near us, because this uh, Chinese temple I have visited all the three. The Chinese temple is still growing, sort of. No, they they keep on digging below the hill, and they say that the height is increasing. That the those are other tricks to follow. But if you compare only the metal part, this statue I probably will remain the tallest. Even uh, this Shivaji statue with the sword, they uh, they proposed two hundred and twelve meters. But uh, let's see when it takes into the reality. So these these are some of the pictures which gives the enormity of this. The ear itself is almost twenty three feet. The the palm is sixty five feet tall. So. Uh, in uh, this another comparison you uh, most of the people might not be aware of is that the mount rushmore are the biggest considered to be the largest face is uh, sculpted of a human uh, re real life human beings correct the presidents of usa so that is also 8 18 meter which is 60 feet whereas our statue's face itself is 21.5 meter it is 70 feet so even by those standards this this probably is the biggest one so no no wonder why they they made it the eighth wonder of the world and it's a real matter of pride for all of us indians and engineers that the whole world was watching and they are really mocking at us sometimes because i have faced so many of humiliation and challenges and taunts and whenever i used to visit some places or when the visitors from foreign countries used to come the one of the top boss of the even the pmc had told me that let us see when if we can build it in 2023 and uh, fortunately the client were so confident you know the way the diligence which they saw in our team you know from each and every worker to the top boss that they they i didn't have to answer that man he was the top man i won't name the position 
So they took him to Gandhinagar and they said, the gentleman, you don't know how we work in India. So hence never ever come to sight and never ever even utter this word to anybody. So, so that, that was probably a very good, conf like uh, uh, I would say that recognition of our efforts. And uh, we said that we will not let you fail. Uh, that was our promise to the client because this was a project where everybody had to play a century. Uh, my uh, boss, no, Mr. Subramaniam, who is MD and he is a very good motivator, he used to say that Rawal, this is a team that has to play a century in which it has to play a century. 99 is not century. That was his dialogue. We want 100, 100 out of 100. So that was the day one we learned that this project is to be done like. So the, when, when you go to the statue, there are three main components of that. So that is Shrest Bharat Bhavan on the left of the screen, what you see. That is the hotel actually. It's a, a small hotel of 52 rooms. Uh, we built by us. Then there is a connecting road of uh, 5.8 kilometers. That was our scope. And then there is the Statue of Unity. So this is how uh, it's divided. Again, statue has three uh, parts, connecting bridge and all, because it's on the hill, Sadhu Hill. So, uh, and uh, there is one memorial and visitor center, which is the landfall point. When you come, you first enter there and uh, travel on the walker letters there, and then go to the statue base. That's how the, the setup is there. These are the different components and all those things. We, all these things are available in the public domain. So there is, and the way I think you guys have been researching these days, no, you don't need all these details. So the, these are the basics of that. Now the statue is a 25 meter tall base sort of building. It appears to be standing on the roof of a building. So that's how it, it's designed. It, it appears like that, but the foundation comes right from the rock. And this is the memorial and visitor center, which I said the buses will come here, they'll drop you and then you enter the statue. Even the boating has started now. So there is a boat route also. But this is the hotel where, where, where the traffic from Baroda side or Mumbai side comes and uh, people get down at this place. From there, the, uh, the, uh, this uh, Statue of Unity Authority will take over and uh, you have to travel by that buses. And this, this is the basic uh, structure of the statue. It, it's conceived as a uh, central core, like you can say the skeleton of the uh, of the statue, which forms by by the these two cylinders. These are the concrete cylinders, and uh, again for stiffness purpose, because the statue is designed for 180 kilometer wind speed. So the stiffness required, and the legs are to be separate. So we we have to have uh, some gap in between. So for that. We had to couple this with uh, two walls further up. So this is how there are two coupling walls, uh, again, uh, tying up the two cylinders for the rigidity purpose. And even then, during the stormy conditions to keep the statue stable, we have two tune mass dampers uh, fixed at the top. You may be aware of tune mass damper being civil engineers that it, it negates or it dampens the oscillations when in a case of earthquake or due to wind uh, oscillations. So those are two 200 tons each tune mass dampers. And on this whole assembly, there is this skeletal structural steel work. And on this steel, the bronze is being clad, like we call it skin, 8 mm thick skin of a uh, bronze casting. Now bronze casting itself is another uh, challenge. And uh, the, this is the basic uh, uh, structure of that. And at 193 RL, that is 135 meters from the base, 
we have this viewing gallery where are almost 200 people at a time are designed to visit. So you can have a full view from the front and the back of the statue. Uh, we have perforated jallies there. I'll touch upon that in later in this. Now, uh, I will show a small uh, video clip which we, which is about uh, talks about statue and then we will move further. October is marked as Rashtriya Ekta Divas. years into independence. Despite the obstacles in its way, India has clearly chosen the path of unity. When the British left India, there were 565 princely states with the option of joining India, Pakistan, or remaining independent. The mammoth task of integrating each princely state with the dominion of India fell upon the shoulders of one man. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, our first Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister. He made the impossible possible. History called him the Iron Man of India, the Great Unifier. Fittingly, his birthday on 31st October is marked as Rashtriya Ekta Divas. It has been a long-standing dream of our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, to pay tribute to the great Sardar Patel. On 31st October 2013, Sri Narendra Modi, the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, laid the foundation for the tallest statue in the world. The Statue of Unity. In keeping with its ethos, LNT took up the challenge head on. Located on Sadhu Bait, 3.2 kilometers from the Sardar Sarovar Dam on the Narvada, the Statue of Unity is an unparalleled confluence of engineering and art. Although LNT had successfully completed a plethora of prestigious projects, including power plants and commercial complexes, a structure of such scale was one of a kind. The honor of sculpting Sardar Patel's likeness went to Padma Bhushan Awardee Sri Ram Sutar. The first challenge was to select an apt pose and expression to do justice to him. Although LNT's role was that of an EPC contractor, he still took active interest in the selection process. Extensive discussions with historians and experts ensued. After sifting through thousands of photographs, the team was unanimous in how the statue should look. Sri Ram Sutar created sculptures in varying sizes, honing every detail again and again. The latest 3D scanning techniques and computer-controlled production ensured accurate reproduction of minute details. Immense statues the world over have a broad base to achieve structural stability. Sardar Patel's statue was slated to be the tallest ever and the greatest task was to achieve the design. His dhoti needed to end above the ankle. He is in a walking stance, thus the feet were not parallelly aligned. The assertive stride meant a gap between the feet, but the LNT team was equal to the task. Operations commenced in 2013 with exhaustive surveys of the land, riverbed, river, and wind. This was followed by critical engineering design. A test of LNT's experience and technical capability. 
In such a remote location, planning and logistics would be the key to all the operations. The LOHA campaign was launched in earnest with a view to employing used implements donated by farmers around the country as a symbolic tribute. This iron forms the steel rebar in the raft foundation, a homage to the Iron Man of India. A reinforced concrete core created with critical concreting methods gave the structure a stable base. This would support the primary and secondary steel trussing. The bronze plates then covered the entire structure, forming the sculpture. Locally available sandstone and Baswara marble has also been used. Besides the statue, other key elements like the memorial and visitor center, main access bridge, bridges and roads were made to precision. The Shresht Bharat Bhavan is a three-star facility for the tourists and guests. To bring socio-economic development to the region, students and vendors from nearby villages and towns were also trained for the project, thereby generating ample employment. The ultra-modern BIM technology for the design and project monitoring brought synchrony between the team and 30 consultants globally. The statue houses two 200 tons suspended tuned mass dampers to make it stable enough to withstand violent winds plus seismic activity. LNT created macro panel assemblies on site for the smaller micro panel bronze castings. This ensured speed and seamless assembly. Every plate was unique and RFID tagged and bolted in its place. As work progressed at blazing speed, the engineered structure transformed and the statue began to take shape. Designers, engineers, experts, specialists and workers from different parts of India have toiled night and day in a united effort unto one goal. The Statue of Unity colossal enough to remind future generations of his epochal contribution. A structure as enduring as the vision of modern Indian nationhood. As Sardar Vallabhai Patel himself said, mankind without unity is not a strength. Only when harmonized by unity does it become a spiritual power. Yeah, so we resume. The uh, seven minutes movie almost tells the entire story. So uh, now we will touch upon wh what is not said there or what generally is not taught in the syllabus. Uh, the, the, the subject itself is so big that it can go on for uh, hours together. So if you get into each and every detail. So I, I will touch upon the aspects which which a fresher or a new uh, engineer should look forward to and uh, what he can uh, take away from that and use in the real life. Those aspects which are not taught in the colleges mostly. So we will, uh, we will uh, talk more on those aspects. So this was the, my first day, 27th October 2014, the letter of acceptance, which is generally the kickoff, the start of the project date. And uh, then the, there was a Bhumi Pojan on the 31st of October 2014. And this this is the, we call it this, that uh, implement, no, Trikam, we call it, for digging the earth. So that, 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 Hathiyar uh, Ojar was given back to me by the Chief Minister of Gujarat that now this is up to you, build the project. And these two gentlemen were the main pillars of this project. 
One is Mr. Rathod, Chairman and Managing Director, and this Mr. Kray Srinivas is IES. He, he was a great support for the other aspects of the project, the soft aspects of the project. And with that guidance, we could finish this uh, in a given time. So this was the terrain. When I went there first time, you know, it took uh, one hour and 40 minutes to reach the top of the Sadhu Hill, what we see. It, it was a literal trekking, like you, you do, get into that you know, adventurous trip. And uh, this was a, an, uh, another aspect was there, there are a lot of wildlife. You no, know, this area is infested with crocodiles. So on the way to reaching there, you have to be watchful about crocodiles also. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the scene in the uh, monsoon, the peak monsoon when the dam will overflow, the water level used to be like this. So uh, we finally did the studies and uh, the levels were decided. The top of the hill was 70.5 meter RL, reduced level. And uh, our uh, studies had indicated that we will need to rest our foundation at 50 meter level. So uh, there are many questions you know, people ask, how deep is the foundation? So technically you can say that this is a 20 meter deep foundation. So by being civil engineers, you will understand that the overburden which we removed to almost 20 meters of this rock and uh, debris, so that weighs even more than the uh, actual uh, weight we replaced with the statue. The weight of the statue is less than this rock's weight. So practically there is no stress, the adverse effect. No, people say that the Subsequently, what will happen? There are cracks, faults, and all those things. So all those aspects were taken into account, and there was no anchoring needed. The further studies with wind tunnel uh, 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 decided that you don't need to, you don't need have any negative stress at the bottom of the found, uh, foundation, raft foundation. So you don't need to have any anchoring. It's like a doll sitting on a table. That's what it is. And this blue line, what we are seeing, 31.5 meter, is the conceptual water level, which subsequently uh, will be there. Now, uh, this uh, dam upstream is almost 3.8 kilometers. Now, this dam was designed as a reverse cycle. So, when there is a uh, less of demand, uh, do you say, for the uh, during the night time, when only the lighting load is there. So during that period, when the power demand is not there, the same turbines can be used to pump back the water into the river, into the reservoir, the dam side behind the dam. So they they had designed a weir further downstream of the statue, and which was already to be constructed as per the uh, dams uh, program. So they started constructing that also simultaneously. So subsequently there was a water pool of 31.5 meter which is now used for uh, ferry service and uh, people can now travel to the statue with the help of boat also. So this is how the Sadhu Hill <coughs> cutting started. These are various uh, scenarios. So I'm showing you these pictures that uh, when the development had not happened, anybody who goes to the statue now will, will not see any of this. But this is wa was the terrain and these, these were the elements we were facing day to day. Now this crocodile is, is lying in the foundation pit of the connecting bridge. So every night we will have some SOS calls because people would be working at night also. So we, we, we had lined up a gang of locals you know, who have been trained to do this job and they will uh, catch this crocodile and uh, put it back into the sanctuary or the other reservoirs of the dam. So this is how we, we manage all these aspects in an environmental way. The design is a technically like any other EPC project. No, the structural design 
we had to first uh, make the design bases, the seismic design base, schematic design, and all, all the aspects of that. There were five stages of uh, design from conceptual to schematic, then uh, construction detailed design, one, two, three stage, and then finally good for construction. So the one paradox of the project is that the, the, there are stipulated time frames available for each stage of approval. And each stage had a cycle time of 45 minutes. So arithmetically, if you calculate the period required uh, for approvals, it will overshoot the even the construction period contractually available. So that was the biggest paradox. So nobody had thought of it. So if you go strictly by book and if you follow uh, only uh, if the site works proceeds only after complete uh, approved documents in the hand, this project would have never been completed. So this was the one biggest challenge for the uh, contractor. Like uh, only companies like Larson and Tubro with such a strong financial background and the technical uh, backup. Like the, the, we were so confident we knew day one what we are doing is right and uh, subsequently things will uh, be approved. We, we were so sure and we the one basic principle which we followed that we will give the best possible option. Even at times when the uh, even the contractual specifications were sometimes we found were not enough. So we improved those things and we give something better than what was uh, contractually uh, we are obliged to. So this is what a, a professional contractor will deal uh, in a manner like in a, in a very professional manner. We dealt with each and every aspects of even engineering and other uh, other uh, matters of the project in this manner. So that built a very good uh, trust, mutual trust between the contractor and the client. Because usually what happens when, when the contractor approaches the client, it always uh, at the back of the mind, the, the other party will think that this guy has something clean out of it. That's why he's proposing this. But in this case, it was quite, quite different. So the, this way we, we built up the confidence and it, the, that is where the personal rapport, the manner in which you approach the uh, approving authorities and all that, that makes a difference. So the, that is one aspect of project management which, which one has to learn. And the whole uh, basic design was for 15,000 visitors per day, which nowadays even more than 35,000 people are visiting. And uh, viewing gallery uh, had only 2,000 visitors in a day. It was designed like that. Now more than 10,000 people are visiting. And the, uh, this is designed for earthquake to the scale of eight also, and the wind speed of 50 meters per second which works out to 180 kilometers per hour speed. So, uh, this uh, location wise, we, it is one notch higher. So, uh, it takes care of the uh, change in environment also. Uh, uh, the environment is day by day deteriorating. So, it will take care of those aspects also. This is how it was planned in advance. Another uh, this important aspect uh, in any project one should follow is that whatever is given in the tender document, you never believe it is the most accurate detail and you have to do your own diligence. That, that's even contractually written down in the contracts that the contractor has to ensure the validity of the data given and the client cannot be held responsible. And we did find such surprises. Biggest surprise was when, when we uh, put the coordinates on the site, you know, the actual statue location is coming where the this blue uh, thing uh, round is seen. No? So actually it, it was not coming on Sadhu Hill according to the data. 
So we did the entire survey again with the lidar, and we spent a lot of money in that, and the, that was needed for the accuracy. Another big aspect uh, in the, the we call it goofy or whatever the consultant or the conceptual uh, design had was that they they assumed that what water level thirty one point five we showed. They they assume that that is the water level of the uh, bridge deck. So they thought that the uh, boats will come directly on the bridge deck, and uh, people has to just get down on the bridge, and they can visit the statue. Whereas the difference is now twenty seven meters, which is nine story, mind you. Nine story one cannot uh, uh, just climb like. So this this was another uh, big missing link in this project. So we 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 had we immediately highlighted these issues and they were subsequently tackled in a different manner. Another difficult thing was the brief was very simple in this project that we need hundred and eighty two meter tall statue, and uh, there was it, it has to be in the walking stance. position like the and the contractor was to finalize even the direction in which it is it is to be uh, facing like so that was another challenge and there was no model given that you have to build the statue according to this photograph or so so when the brief is very simple no ek jaise koi bana un kuch acha sa khana khilao like you you don't specify no you, you go to a restaurant and tell the waiter wo acha sa kuch leke aao What a chance! That sort of specification this was, and uh, that puts a lot of pressure on the contractor. And when the time is not there, now in this case that it was a big challenge. You had only thirty three months available, and in which you have to do all this thing. You have to decide how it should look, where it should face. And unless these things are decided, you cannot do anything at the site level. So. that is where our uh, risk taking ability came into picture that we 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 had done lot of thing before even the tender uh, was awarded to us the project was awarded to us so almost say 60% of engineering was done by us ready and only thing the fine tuning was to be done was based on the data available from the site so this is how we started with and the orientation was the first bottleneck that we when we presented to the uh, uh, up to state level agencies no up to the chief minister we had to give three options so we gave them three options we did entire solar shadow analysis for the entire year on which is the best duration for tourist visitor because of this uh, time of you know selfie and picture taking when the tourist comes the sun should be uh, shining on the face and all those things has to be taken care of so those based on those the orientations were decided and we we had three proposals but we were not getting any decision which has to be followed up so finally i could guess that the issue is that the the decision will be taken only at the top most level so we said that we are ready to face the uh, whatever the situation is that you just uh, give us an appointment so they organized a meeting with the delhi and uh, myself and my chief architect two of us went there with the entire set of uh, uh, this uh, preparations you know we made the orientation and all those things and i said this is the best opportunity we have got that once we get so many things uh, approved tacitly like no there nobody will put this uh, pen on the paper and sign off that those things but once it is decided at the top level no that this is okay then usually people don't dare to change it in that we had seen so what we did this is one another aspect of how how you manage when the decisions are not coming in you should know where the power center is then who matters ultimately so accordingly we targeted we we again spent so much of money even my management was at times uh, at loggerage with me he said why tumar 
मतलब इन कंस्ट्रक्शन यू नो पीपल विल सोफिस्टिकेटेड लैंग्वेज में भी बात नहीं करते बॉसिस बोले तेरे बाप का स्टेच्यू बन रहा है क्या तो दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ डायलॉग ऑल्सो आई टू हियर बट आई हेड डिसाइडेड दैट सम आई विल अचीव वॉट द टारगेट इज सो आई आई फेस्ट ऑल दिस म्यूजिक एंड वी प्रिपेयर वेरी थरोली द एंटायर प्रोजेक्ट एंड we 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 took this uh, entire full mod- scale uh, this scaled model and explained everything even how the statue will look after 20 years 25 years 50 years and 100 years so these four replicas is sitting here in different colors are an indication that how the colors will change and all and uh, this statue doesn't have any finishing or any paint on it so it, it it's uh, it gets uh, aging naturally like any other uh, big statues so these all these approval sort of this is the technique we used to get like and then we proceeded further on that this this, this is the aging so this was also decided in that meeting the orientation was also decided uh, and uh, then we started working so the aesthetics of the statue it was in uh, a big challenge this was uh, in my opinion it this project didn't have so much of a technical challenge it has different type of challenge like the decide, deciding the aesthetics what the uh, the appearance should be that was a bigger challenge so we started with 3 feet 18 feet 30 feet and all those thing and we we had to take so many opinions in this because there were a lot of adverse comments coming in so we what we did again we went back to the birthplace of sardar from where a lot of uh, from those quarters you no know, people were uh, quite vocal about that and many of the non resident gujaratis you no know, they will come out with so many uh, like detailed studies of other statues and how it should look and all and they they, they were very giving us a many constructive criticism and we took it in a very uh, positive manner and in the right spirit so we said because uh, the newspaper always give you very bad publicity so we said that uh, we should not uh, lose our face in this because our job is to give the best product ultimately for larsen and to bro making a mickey mouse statue or sardar statue or nehru statue doesn't make any difference so in one of the meeting i said making this wrinkled face or uh, making a face of a, uh, a donald duck it doesn't make any difference cost wise to larsen and to bro and we have nothing to do with our job is to give the best which the public and all the stakeholders should be happy with because it's public money ultimately so we went back to public we called it the consultation workshops and i personally uh, used to go to each and every and first give this initial talk in gujarati that this is how why we have come here we are contractor but we have to do this job for you so this was not in the contract i mind you but to push the things to push the decisions we had to do this you see see this this, this is the news paper item sardar jevi khumari statue of unity na chehra par nahi and when such one newspaper article comes no your top management starts calling you from the 7 o'clock in the morning and you have to answer everywhere that from delhi calls will start coming oh kya ho raha hai rahul udhar dekho ye ho raha hai ye ho raha hai so this project management was not unlike any other technical project like you have to you don't know who who is your stakeholder suddenly somebody will pop up and he will become the main focus this is how things were here even times of india run almost half a page story so what we did we used uh, certain techniques in this the first is the public opinion be very frank 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 and open and honest so they understand that our aim is also and we put uh we make them also party in they said you tell us no i don't know how the nose should be can you tell me some can you give me some photographs so they gave me 20000 photographs 
that was another challenge. So how to find out which photograph you select? So the, it, it was a constant reiteration. And this is only one aspect. Now, there are certain things going on at site. There are designers working on that. There are certain people working in London office, Chennai, somewhere fabrication is going on. So the role of the project director or the project manager is to see that it, it was like a playing of a symphony. You know? All your instruments, all your orchestra has to play in the same tune. And whatever is happening or whatever uh, you, you learn new, you have to pass it on to everybody. So everybody has to be on the same page. I'll give you an example. Like in the statue phase, some uh, uh, changes are made. One uh, wrinkle is removed or uh, some additional dimple is made there. Now the, the, this will have an effect, cascading effect on the structural which supports at the back. Now, again, you have to go back to the sculptor also, that he will not agree to that. A 92-year Padma Shri, Padma Vibhushan sculptor, and a guy like me, an engineer, goes and tells him that, look, sir, Sutar sir, we have aisa karna padega. And if, I don't want to say the words in Marathi used to tell me, but so those languages and all those barb those brunt you will face, no, the messenger will carry all that load. But then I developed a good relation and I made him also a party. So many of the workshop we, we used to take that old man and uh, he used to interact directly with the people. So this is how we, we managed. Then we made a 30 feet mock-up finally and took it to Bardoli, which is Sardar's uh, Karmabhumi. And we installed it there. And this was accepted by everybody. So based on this, uh, we uh, then some face again, we had some comments. So we had again workshop on. So this evolution process actually started right up to 2018. So imagine there is project going on, but it is constantly under improvement. And that's fine tuning, whatever is happening, it has to go up to the casting level. So once up to the uh, neck, everything was finalized because it won't make much changes. So we, we said, go ahead with the casting. Otherwise, we will not meet the deadline. So those risks and all that, again, uh, a company like l &T, you know, they can take. We had some 200 crores worth material there unpaid for and all. So these were our in, like investments. And there were very, very tough times also the, at the time because you have your own targets and uh, uh, schedules to be maintained, no budget, internal project budgets and all those things, cash flow. So all those things were getting affected. But somehow we, we managed. Now this is, this is one such workshop where these are all this Kalarthi madam is there who, who used to claim that I have played in Sardar's lap and Sardar's ears were big, big than what you have shown here. So jokingly, I used to tell her that, madam, when you were so young, no, even I feel my Nanaji's ears were the biggest in the world. And so uh, this is where the technology came in very handy. The 20,000 photographs we got, from there, what we did, we made, we hired this CAD studio, Singapore, and they gave us this wired model, this wireframe model of entire biometrics. So I knew Sardar's every like uh, detail, you no know, biometric detail of uh, what is the thickness of his lips and what is the uh, eye dimension or ear dimension, nose opening diamond, everything was there. Now it was a matter of the artist to put skin on it and to to make it in the artistic version. Like when you say, you, know, like you want Amitabh Bachchan of Tiwar or you want Amitabh Bachchan of Tinikam, which, which, uh, which is your model of the statue? So you decide and some dramatics has to be added. So this is what the artist did. Now all this thing is not taught you in the colleges. There's this art and all this, we, we don't know. We, as a civil engineer, we are not trained for this. But this is part of your other personality if you cultivate. If you look at things in a different manner, whenever which project you are working on, but you can 
take care of uh, or observe the entire aspect of it, the aesthetics, the design and all, then you slowly start understanding these things and which helps you in a situation like this. These are the workshop programs. Then we had this session in the principal. Uh, this is, uh, incidentally, Ahmedabad municipality was India's first municipality. And Sardar Patel was the first uh, Pradhan of that. So this was a historical place where we said we will decide what is the final one picture based on which we will make the face. And uh, see this is very historical photograph. Here one side these historians are sitting. On the other side I said my job as a contractor is to give the best of the product. So I will bring in the best minds in the world possible on the Sardar. So these are the authorities on Sardar, so-called. This is Dr. Rizvi, then uh, Kadri, then uh, this is Mr. Khamar is there, who is a, a, a trustee of that Sardar Patel Museum. Then Vishnu Kumar Pandya, Lalit Kala Academy chairman and an authority on Sardar, that, like this trust people and all. On the right side, this is JJ School of Arts uh, Dean of uh, Sculpting Department. Then there is a head of uh, professor, the sculpt depart, Sculpture Department. This is Ram Sutar, his son. This is another uh, uh, Patel from uh, Karamsad, who is a trustee of that Karamsad uh, Sardar Trust. And these, these are our staff here. So we said we will put people together and they will decide. We, we as a contractor were just facilitating. This is how we solve these issues. And we took, whenever there were questions or arguments and all, then we used to put in the facts there that look, this is what the CAD data or the biometrics is saying. Now this is how it will appear. Then our architect will present those uh, technical drawings. And finally, this is how this is our design head. You he, he also used to visit, and uh, in the back side there are the CAD studio people. So finally, after the whole day, the arguments went on, and we we finalized this face, one face, as a final picture. And then the work started at the Noida studio of the sculptor. Again, people, uh, first model was made there in one is to five scale. Then I had to take the whole uh, Jamburi there. Now, this is another aspect of project management that each and every guy you will have to take care of his transport, he is there, stay and uh, uh, take good care of that according to their age and all. So, uh, create a friendly environment and this is how we presented the model there and we finally got this 30 feet replica made which fortunately everybody looking at it said that yes we have achieved like it was a collective this thing and then it was converted into a bronze replica which was uh, placed and inaugurated by chief minister of Gujarat. Now this, this was to be further enlarged into 20 times to make the real size. Again, still there were things with the face, but we kept on developing till the last date on this uh, face because we ourselves were not satisfied about certain aspects. And when you enlarge anything, no, you, are, you, you know that, the, the, like in a photograph also, the grains will tear off and the details will be lost. So again, one important thing, what we learned is that whatever technology, don't get overwhelmed by technology. Ultimately, technology will help you somewhere or But the man behind that machine is more important. The, the sculpture had to be there even till the last mold was cast. Because when the enlargement happens, no, that, that at that scale, no, no one of us can visualize it. Only a sculptor could do it. And we used to take him where, where we did in China, the casting. We did the entire, we submitted this entire scan data to the Chinese company and ordered them in the form of one meter by one meter tiles. It's a three dimensional tile, you can say. And all those things, the mosaic was to be combined into a statue. 
so this is how evolution of the whole thing took place these are some of the aspects this is one full scale uh, plaster of paris model made in the china foundry the, those those were engineering challenges i told you, you know the aesthetics and engineering were always colliding with each other because when you need structural strength and the thickness of the lake and all you no know, it was uh, coming out which was not matching with the aesthetics requirement so again the, you have to go back to the drawing board and retread like with so many but all these things were going parallelly mostly like this wind tunnel study gave us some very good uh, data like one one uh, you as an engineer you may be knowing but it was a surprise to many laymen that the maximum stress on the statue is developed at the back of the statue which is the negative pressure when the wind blows at 180 km wind speed it is not the face where where from the front but where on the back where the suction is created no that negative pressure was more than the positive one so that was one aspect of engineering and then we had to do a lot of uh, this uh, testing on that and we used extensively this virtual reality which is a very handy thing and uh, for approvals it was very easy like we uh, this is our chennai studio where you can walk through sort of so there we used to take uh, the top uh, 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 people and uh, we used to show them the developments what is happening in advance so they can uh, tell us in advance something so we can preempt if something is not going right or which may not get approved so this is how why pe people ask you no know, how you could do it in 33 months but this is what we did it was a big team effort like all other teams has to play in the same tune a sitting at side i i i, I could command uh, people sitting in london or in chennai and that was the empowerment given to me as a project director because i had promised to the prime minister a gujarati me one day he asked in the meeting no thai sakse thai jase means will it happen i said it is technically possible i had also learned no staying with political people for a long time there i i also gave a political answer that yes i said it can be done technically it's possible then i looked around the uh, other bosses you no know, they're all government employees and all so he understood he got the message that if everybody cooperates things will happen and this is how we we could do that ultimately and we also like worked in uh, so much in advance like we had everything done in the mock up at the Uh, earlier stage it was say so this is in very initial stage where the finishes were finalized like even companies like alenti you know they were used to say why is not necessary you are spending so much of money but then people realize all these practices i followed which i used to follow in uh, overseas projects so then this is a routine thing we don't do it in india mostly but there one is to one scale mock up were also some of sometimes part of the contract and things used to be so easy then there won't be any last moment changes and all so this is how the projects can be done in a fast manner evolution we stretch up on the entire story so this is how you see how many faces we have changed it, it, it kept on evolving so this this was one small change the lips like somebody thought is looking like mona lisa so we had those comments also the change that finally this was in 2018 this is the full scale assembly done at china may 2018 now imagine the project is to be inaugurated on 31st may 31st of october 2018 and this was the state so wh wh what i'm trying to emphasize is this this was a constantly evolving thing there was nothing final till last date 
and these 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 we we had assembled just to like a good plastic surgeon no each and every joint was to be decided that when you weld it should get into that fold so you don't see the joints so if you see the face now if you visit the statue if you see the face you will you will see it's a whole piece like one piece so these 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 were the aspects in that and look at the eyes and all those things those detailing and also how it works out so this is how the whole thing similarly in geology also a lot of uh, studies were done almost 52 bore holes were made we load the video cameras took out the uh, detailed uh, geology we did a lot of extra buttressing work also to protect the hill around and all so the river bank protection so many so many things yeah this is the first access to the bridge almost 7 meter concrete pipeline was laid because accessing the foundation was difficult going by the river bed so the, these are some of the photographs concrete temperature was another like a paradox you no know, the specification was such that the temperature temperature should not rise but the cement content was so much that technically it's like asking somebody that you have to every day morning drink 500 mg of glucose but your sugar level should not go beyond 80 so that sort of specification was there so somehow we had to do monitoring manage and all and a lot of technical experts were consulted for this we found the solution for this these are the basic engineering uh, drawings for that these are the two lift shafts in which the lift is going up to the top we used the jump form and uh, automatic climbing shuttering for this project uh, the some area we use this architectural uh, pattern concrete also the main challenge was this the putting up the uh, bronze cladding at the foot level because the space was a very very uh, constrained uh, commodity there and uh, uh, in the basic difference between all other statues and statue of unity is that it's on the hill so you don't have access from around this so it has to be built like a project uh, it's like a multi storied building project building from inside like so like so the show no this statue is built with scaffolding but whereas we had to work from inside so we designed as a concept uh, of a tall uh, building with a facade no the the, the the bronze cladding was treated as facade this is the schematic of that there are so many uh, actual uh, records world records uh, uh, broken in this project like removal of this crane is the most anybody in the construction field knows that that is the most critical and a risky affair Re uh, removal of the crane remove the uh, support now in our case we have to remove the support put the cladding there and well uh, the close the opening and finish it off that that's another challenge and time was ticking for that reinforcement was another issue the congestion and honeycombing and all everything everything was a challenge another challenge was whether like suddenly the clouds would be there uh, that uh, you cannot see from top to bottom the crane some had lifted something so you don't know what to do about it so we had to have some emergency platforms like this because this building had sloping roofs you cannot put the material elsewhere so we built some flat helipad sort of platforms around on which something can be lowered immediately if the uh, such eventuality occurs and uh, simultaneous working at different level was a, a big nightmare for us like if some small bolt falls you no know, it uh, it can kill somebody at the work low Uh, who is doing some flooring or something <clears throat> so this is how all the challenges were these are the basic uh, structural elements of that 
Now the complexity of these joints, you see how much accuracy is needed when you have some six, seven junctions, three dimensional like a space frame. So all those tolerances, checking, inspection, approval, all those things are quite difficult. And finally, when the, pro the uh, panels come in small pieces, we have to join together. We call this as a macro panel or 9 meter by 9 meter or 6 meter by 6 meter. It has to be transported to the site from the yard and then erected. So each and every panel was to be monitored and this is how the each, according to the place, the panel shape was decided, the size was decided. A lot of intricate detailing and all, alignment. So a very, very risky job. People had to do a lot of circus with proper precautions. This is the viewing gallery. This is how the viewing gallery is there. The viewing gallery has a story in itself. Earlier they had some glass here. Then we suggested that glass would look very ugly. And then we suggested this. So you can get the feel of the elements of nature because unless you have that feel. No, you don't realize that you are at height. If the wind has to blow in your face or the, the uh, rain should last on you, so you, you realize where you are. Otherwise, you are just sitting in a air condition like hotel room sort of. Yeah. So that, that's how this nature was to be felt by people. And there, there are so many perforations because when we studied uh, the CFD data, we found that the temperature inside between the skin and the concrete core can go up to 80 degrees centigrade, which could be very detrimental to the structure and all. So we had to have certain perforations and all to vent out the heat. And for maintenance also, there are certain openings and all. This is the full scale uh, performance test up to the failure we studied and we found that the design is okay. Then then only we had proceeded with that. So these, these are the lot of intricate detailing of the bronze. Then bronze uh, uh, and uh, metal, biometallic corrosion, how to avoid that, that was another subject dealt with. So this is how the cladding uh, plates used to come from uh, uh, casting yard uh, in uh, China from the bronze factory. It used to come to Mundra, that's a port there, and then it used to, by road, we used to bring it to the site. These are the, this is the yard, this is how the, it was stacked. Now each and every plate had an RFID tag which gave us an entire genesis uh, from, from which raw material, what was the test results and uh, where exactly this fits in. So we, each one is weighing around 150 to 200 kgs. So in like a playing card, you cannot shuffle it around. You have to precisely pick up which plate has to go where. And for that, we built an in-house uh, uh, app, mobile app for this. So in this RFID, when you scan it, it will give you the location and all. And then you assemble it on the site, then remove it again in a panel by panel. And this is just a test assembly. And then you take it to the site there for erection. This is one uh, uh, peculiar situation where this kurta's bottom, no, where it, this is actually upside down. So we had to uh, assemble it in upside down position and erect it in the right side up. So a lot of uh, jugglery and tricks were there in this. These are the yard for the world. Now texture also was decided for different materials should have different texture because in a monochrome material, you can indicate two different materials only by texture. So the skin texture, the cotton, Khadi texture or wool texture, all those textures were indicative of different material. You can, by look at it, you can feel that. That's a, That was the idea. This is where the sculptor came into play. 
So these are different levels, the risk involved, like working in this scenario. You can see how the people are, with all safety arrangements, they used to work day and night, day and night. And close monitoring, each and every panel every day was monitored, how much is to be lifted, how much has to be fixed in, what assembly has to go, how much is casting done in China. So it was, as I told you, you know, it was like a playing of a symphony, like real, in a real sense, in the current modern scenario, you know, that recording is happening at some 50 different places. So somewhere some violin player is playing, somewhere some trombone is being played, somewhere drums are played. But all those things has to go into one track and the music should come out. So this is what this music place was ultimately. And I was doing my job as a comp like a composer. Now. That, that's how we began the entire thing. This is the last piece of the skull cap final top. Then we did final alignment just in the fag end of the October. These are our workmen. This is a, a very poignant moment for me. Like, when the statue is done, no, the, the, there is no drawing, nothing, no approval as such. So aesthetics, who will approve? So I called uh, Ram Sutar and his son just on uh, probably 20th of October. And uh, everything was ready, election were done. And I said, we will move around the whole day. We move around statue from uh, in a different places. We uh, had a look, we took camera, we took binoculars and he observed this, how the statue is appearing. And at the end of the trip, I asked him, Sir, Dada Avla Kasal Vadla. So he, he could not answer actually. He, the tears came into his eyes. So he felt it so lively, you know, that the statue has come to life, he says. And Frankly, he told me, I never thought that you will be able to do this. So that was probably the biggest award for me, a personal like uh, satisfaction, no? that such a big artist telling you that what somebody had visualized, he, uh, he, he gave a shape to it and finally I made it into reality. So uh, then I said, can you put it on uh, a piece of paper? Then I got a printout, I had readily available one photo on this. He has made a full statement about it. This I have preserved for my personal this thing. So this is the entire story. This is the team which built it. These are this is my team who built it. These are the accolades we got. A lot of awards and a lot of uh, recognition. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing story, sir. You proved that being calm and having a positive outlook to face any challenge makes everything easier. I was mesmerized by your personality, sir. The way you talked about your life, your challenges and opinions so candidly. We were completely hooked. It felt as if we were there when the project was being done. Yeah. I'm sure that I'm speaking on behalf of the entire yeah. audience watching us right now, that you really inspired us with your groundbreaking thoughts and ideas. So I, I, am, I, some... I am not a professional speaker, or uh, so uh, maybe I may not have that sophistication, but I, I can touch the subject in the right manner, I hope. Yeah, yeah so you surely did. Thank so, you. any concluding message you would like to give to our audience and the budding civil engineers? My message is that, say, uh, first of all, the, the ethical practice is the most important thing. Once, once you know what you want to do, and when you think that what you are doing is right, 
don't worry about uh, accolades and all those things things will fall into place when people start working only for getting name or something then the issues come in like people won't support you but when you when somebody realizes that this guy doesn't have any stake in this and he wants to do this people will naturally come to your help i have come across such situation in this project that you cannot imagine that this government officials will come and help no doubt there were some uh, bad apples also that who, who will always put you down or do something but there are always such good people who 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 will see you struggle and who will help you out so what i what i learned one thing is the sincerity of the cause like the see you if you are sincere no nobody can stop you and even in your career or you don't need to be great engineer or something you you have to be first honest you have to be real reliability first one when i tell you come in the morning 9 o'clock and if you have ex- only excuse you know sir aaj ye ho gaya mar sal na raat mein thoda whatsapp zyada kar liya uth nahi paya ye ho this is not the reliability and dependability this is what counts in construction industry we don't need iit users and doctors and all those things they, they are needed for a specific things but when you have to deliver you need people who whom you can depend upon uh, uh, even companies and organizations and all no they they have different people for different roles they when we when it comes to certain thing you know they will call some specific guy they know why ye karne wala hai so that sincerity ultimately can only help you baki so there are no shortcut in this there is no shortcut that's what hard luck is so much sir, for your advice <laughs> that was really motivating <laughs> it seems from the comment section that everyone is quite thrilled by your lecture it was indeed an amazing session sir to get to learn about world's tallest statue and to vo- your thoughts and advice mm-hmm. you are simply elated you could join us today as a part of sesa family you mm-hmm. are leaving us truly inspired thanks at answer also thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning in we hope you had enjoy- you really enjoyed this session See you tomorrow for the third and last session of Stapatya Guest Lecture Series. Tomorrow we will be having over Mr. Chetan Raikar, the man behind restoration of Hotel Taj after the attacks of 2611. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to share. I am Kunalva signing off. Take care and stay safe. This is Sesa Vijayti. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much, sir. मेरा वो शेयर में इश्यू हो गया सर 